Hello. What's up? How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I was going to be in my car too, but I came to the front steps. Well, I was going to be on the beach because I am, I'm here with the family just hanging out on the beach and it's so beautiful, but the wind yeah. picked up. So I was like, ah, uh, they're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea. You're right about that. <laughs> I know. I heard you were going to be on a beach. I'm like, that's really cool. I should be somewhere cool. So I went to Starbucks and uh, in Chicago, we had a bad storm yesterday. So the power went out. So it oh, closed. Dang. Yeah, I had to come back home. <laughs> I you guys got a lot going on out there recently. I've been watching Chicago all over the news. We, we are definitely on the news for sure. Um, I would love to see more positivity or at least us in a more positive light. Um, I think we're going to get there. I believe in my city so much. But, yes, um, it's a lot going on here. And how are you? Are you in California? I'm California down here at Newport Beach. Just, I mean, a rough Tuesday. Rough Tuesday when you get to, like, sit on the beach and hang out, you know. <laughs> it just be like that. No, That's it's all amazing. good. No, what are you up to? So I'm here chatting with you, which I'm really looking forward to, by the way. So um, we got a lot to talk about. But first and foremost, I do see your memes on like Instagram and everything. And uh, apparently quarantine and kids is not the move. And I'm trying to figure oh. out why it's not the move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any, so I don't know. So this is the one time to be lucky that you don't have children <laughs> is during quarantine. <laughs> Yes, at least no, you're it's just, listen, it's just, it's a lot. Like, I, I can't complain. You know, I, I joke about it more than anything is, it's just, it's a different ball game when you're used to having kids in school and, you know, just out of the house. So you get some time by yourself for a little bit. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of family time. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's, it's all good. I mean, I, I think we're pretty used to it now at the beginning. It was really rough having kids home 24 7 but we've we've adjusted well and kids are supposed to start school up next week it's all going to be virtual um we're, we're, we're used to it now i don't know for sure for sure have you i mean as far as like you know your work life and everything how has that changed in quarantine because i think everyone's changed you know the way that they move they operate the way that you know we even look at our work depending kind of what yeah. you do right so how, do, how has it affected you or how has it changed for you? You know what? I, I guess the one thing that's nice is not having to drive to L.A. so often. You know, I was having to drive to L.A. because I'm an I'm Orange County guy. So, mm. you know, I'm a, I'm a good hour away from L.A. And that's with like zero traffic. So when there's traffic, it's it's an hour and a half, two hours. And I was driving up there to, do you know, do appearances on different shows and stuff like that. And then qu quarantine kind of hit Corona. And so it was like. Oh, I can do everything from my house now. Everything, like all the live shots that I do are just, you know, on either Zoom or Skype or whatever. And so that was really nice. And before it was like, okay, we're going to send a crew down to you to set up and, or we have to have you drive to a studio to set up. And now it's like, everyone's happy with a Zoom call and it's great. I believe that. And that is very true. And I kind of think like moving forward, you know, in the next year or so, depending on kind of like where the world takes us. I believe that there, there's going to be more of that, you know, whether yeah. we can or can't be in studio. I mean, that's a good thing for creatives. So, and kind of going off of that too, I mean, your podcast, you're able to do that too, the ho um, Hollywood Raw. You're yeah, yeah. All, I mean, that. but all that's all been basically from home since the beginning. I mean, you buy the right recording equipment and you can do it from home. I mean, what do you, what do you guys do for the morning show? Well, the morning show, we do come into the studio live. Uh, we did do it remotely for a minute. Um, yeah. But we were then cleared to come in. Um, we're all pretty quarantined anyway, so we felt comfortable that way. Um, but I also have a podcast as well. And everyone that I talked to, it's just been virtual, uh, virtually. And, and honestly, like, I'm not mad at it. Like, I do miss the in-studio uh, portion, you know, because you get the guests coming in. It's a good time. You feel the vibes. And you know that. Like, interviewing yeah. people is such a, it's such a fun thing to do. But I've learned to do it through Zoom and the Skype and all of that. And it works just as well. I don't know about you, but I can see my co-host Adam is on here right now. <laughs> He's shouting you guys out. Um, but no, Adam and I, we do everything. So just like we do like a Skype call so we can see the guests. So we have the interaction with the guests. But yeah. it's also been a lot easier to book people because they don't have to leave their homes anymore. So that's been really nice. Like we had Brian Austin Green on last week. And it was just like, just do it from your house, dude, because he lives way up in Malibu and I'm down in Orange County. So like just to have to schedule that is kind of a 
a pain. And so yes. now we can get better guests because they're just at their houses. It's great. I love that. So talk about your co-host. I mean, what's, and I have to ask this because I think it's the funniest question. What's one thing that drives you crazy about Adam? There's one be thing that drives me crazy about, oh, put me on the spot as he's sitting here listening. Thanks the a lot. Shade. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that drives me crazy about Adam. Yes. Um, God, putting me on the spot here. I'm we trying to think. One good thing, one bad, like what, one thing that drives you crazy. Well, I, can, I tell you one awesome thing about Adam. He, <laughs> He's writing that he's hot. <laughs> uh, no, one good, one really good thing is he asks the best question. So Adam has been, um, like, he calls himself a, a street journalist. I call him a paparazzi. Call him whatever you want. But he has been, uh, he was, you know, he was a paparazzi for TMZ for many, many years. And then he, he broke off from them and he's just been, like, freelance for a long time. Yeah. And he asks the best questions and he, he knows everyone in New York. Celebrities doorman, valets, like he just kind of knows everyone. And I always say that story because he's one of those guys that he walks into a hotel and like Oprah says hi to him. Like everyone what? freaking knows Wait, this guy. What? And so everyone, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Oprah, Kevin Hart, The Rock, everyone's like, hey, Adam, hey, Adam. Like, so that's one, one thing is that we can, you know, we get some really fun guests because of his connections. And um, because he's been a paparazzi for so long, he knows the greatest questions to ask. He's always on top of pop culture. Um, so he's just a great person to co-host with, honestly. Um, something that annoys me about Adam, I, I got to think of something. I got to think of probably <laughs> that he, pull, he pulls a lot of jokes on me. A lot of jokes on me. <laughs> He'll let, no. send me videos where I think it's like, like a kid video and then mm -hmm. some, you know, and it'll be x-rated before you know it. <laughs> he said you just like my internet connect i'm done <laughs> you guys are fun though I, I love that that's why i had to ask that question so i mean like doing your podcast and everything you know i'm a believer that podcasting and i've said this before even before quarantine before all of this i think podcasting is gonna it's already making its big like wave as far as like it's kind of like the new i mean it's the new the way people consume you know uh content information like anything like that so a lot of people ask, you know, how do I start a podcast? Like, like typical advice question, but I thought you would be a better person to answer that. So how do, what kind of advice would you give somebody who wants to create their own content, their own podcast? It can even be like web series, you know, things like that. Um, what kind of advice would you give somebody so they can stand out so that they could provide good content? Cause there's so much out there. Um, I think finding a niche is a big thing. So finding whatever you truly enjoy talking about is key. Cause there's people that like everything. Whether mm -hmm. you podcast about Roblox, you know, and you find that that young demographic that loves the ins and outs. I mean, you could literally talk about anything and there will be people that will listen to it. Mm -hmm. So finding that passion. And then I think just starting it. There's so many people that I feel like have come to me and said, how do I do it? And I'm like, just start. You got to just start somewhere. So start recording yourself. Upload it on YouTube. Upload it on Instagram. Upload it wherever. But just start. Don't keep talking about it. Just do it. And then eventually you'll kind of, you'll find things out as you go. So whether that's you get on, you know, a platform like Omni Studio, where it's somewhere that you can post your podcast and then it posts to iTunes and Spotify, you know, like you just, I think, I think I see a lot of people talking and not doing. And that would, my, my suggestion is just start. That's it. Start. Like when Adam and I started, I, like our recording equipment was not great. Um, we got a lot of complaints from people being like, your audio sounds so crappy. Come on. Like, like I want to listen to this podcast. You guys got great content, but your audio sounds so bad that I can't listen to it. So it was like, okay, so now we know we got to invest in better microphones. We got to invest in, you know, uh, recording equipment. I mean, right. you can go out there. Some of the best advice we got from the, from Pat, he, um, he's the guy that does all of our editing. He goes, go get an iRig. Do you know what an iRig is? like the ring I no no it's called an i rig like i and then r-i-g okay and it's re it's a little recording box and it's for people who want to podcast and it makes you sound like you're in a studio so you can have you have this little i rig and a microphone and you plug it into your computer and you use like garage band to record and it makes you sound like you're in a studio and so i think that was some of the best advice we had got i love that
That's amazing. Well, see, people are learning today. And like you said, you got to start because that's the thing. Everybody wants to, yep, and they have ideas, and that's wonderful, but you got to bring those to life. Yeah, exactly. So what did, what, did, did you guys have, what did you record when you were at home for the first couple of weeks? Like with or the did they run show? like an ISD line or whatever it's called? Yep, we have those ISD lines. Um, so Fred and Andy are the hosts. We were all at Andy's house, and Fred was actually at his house. Um, we did it for a couple, yeah, like a week or so. And then we all were just comfortable going back. It just, it does sound better when we're together, at least, because we are yeah. a show of five people. Um, and we all have like our role. So for us, I mean, it works out. And, and you know, thankfully, I'm like looking for wood, knock on wood. It stays that way. Because um, it's, it's just nice. It's nice for me to, to like get up and go to work. You know, I will admit that. It's a great yeah. feeling. So I'm not mad at that. Um, but I do have a question for you, too. So when you have a celebrity on, right, a lot of times, you know, and we talk about this in the radio too, and it's just the truth. Like when we have a celebrity, sometimes, unfortunately, you are prepped uh, for certain questions and you're not supposed to ask certain questions. So people always say, you know, how do you ask the tough questions to a celebrity that, you know, everyone's dying to know, but, you know, it can be an uncomfortable question or maybe not as appropriate or not even approved at that point, right? Because sometimes you are approved for questions, mm -hmm. sometimes you're not. And people need to like, people, I don't work in radio or, or any kind of media. Sometimes they're not aware of that. So we do we do tell people that sometimes, like, you know, hey, by the way, this is how it works. Because people ask, and we, we tell the truth. Um, so how do you prepare for that? If you have a guest that, you know, everyone's, like, really willing to talk to or really trying to figure something out, they want to know something, but they, they're afraid to ask or they don't know how to. How do you go about that as, like, a, I know, think, as a pro? I, I, I think you just have to think out the question really hard. Like, if it's something that they flat out, if, you know, if their reps or them say like, do not ask about so-and-so or do not ask about the situation, you got to leave it alone because I learned er in my early days at TMZ, like you will get ripped off the red carpet if you ask a question. I think it was, God, I remember it was one of my first red carpets for TMZ. And that's when we did red carpets. Like that's how long ago <laughs> it was working at TMZ. Um, but I was on the red carpet, and I think it was, like, Jared Leto or something where they uh, they said, like, don't ask any questions about Lindsay Lohan because at that time they were rumored to be dating. Yeah. And the girl next to me heard it, and she was, like, an Us Weekly correspondent or whatever, and she goes, I'm going to ask. I don't care. I'm going to ask. And I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> right. And she fully was like, so what do you think of – so what's all up with all the rumors with Lindsay Lohan? And immediately he got like yanked. She got yanked off the red carpet. Like it was a big deal. And keep in mind, it was like a freelance person. I don't think it was like a staff person for us weekly. And I think they were just risking it to see if they could get a soundbite. And I'm like, it's not worth it. I think I learned at that moment. I'm like, it's not worth it. I would rather get four minutes with the person than zero minutes and a bad reputation with the person. So in regards yeah. to asking a question appropriately like so when we had brian austin green on the other day obviously he's been in the news a lot everyone wants to know about his love life everyone wants to know about megan and i think it's about positioning the questions so that the person doesn't feel uncomfortable so you know everyone wants to know well what are your thoughts about machine gun kelly but you can't ask that you can't you know you that just it feels like that would be wrong to ask about machine gun kelly so Right. You ask other questions, you say, okay, well, what it, you know, do you and Megan have any rules about the children meeting other pe new partners? You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a way to ask it where it feels like you're not just digging in and wanting to get that gotcha moment, but people are, que are questioning. I'm curious. So like, let me find nice. another way to ask it. No, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Because you obviously want to ask questions. I mean, a lot of times, you know, there's repetitive questions that a lot of reporters or so will ask or interviewers. Um, and then there's the juicy stuff. But I think like you said it correctly, like there's just a, a fine line. You have to know how to ask a question. And, you know, if they're comfortable, sometimes they'll even just tell you themselves. You know what I mean? And you'll get that oh, yeah. moment, which is crazy. Th those are those are my favorite interviews when the person <laughs> doesn't care when they will answer anything. We've had like we had Farrah Abraham on the podcast. Mm -hmm. She does not hide away from a single question she was amazing. Um, you know, I, you love her, you hate her, whatever your thought is of her. She was still a great interview for. Yeah. Interest.
I'm sorry, you cut off who? I said Perez Hilton. Yeah, Perez, really? Yeah, I said Perez was one of those guys that, uh, you know, he, he comes across as a very open book, but then it, it, when we asked him questions, he didn't want to answer a lot. And I thought that was, it didn't seem like it fit his brand. That's interesting. It, it, it's the surprising ones that you think would be maybe like the most open or the coolest or the whatever, the waka waka. And sometimes they're a lot more private than you think. Very interesting. Yep. Yep. Oh my God. Well, I, I really appreciate you giving us all this input and advice. And I have one last question kind of on the spot though. I was wondering yeah. if you and Adam would be guests on my podcast. Sure. Yes. We'll schedule that. <laughs> we'll get a little crossover with that. Um, so yeah, my podcast too, it's, it's on iHeart and, and all the other platforms as well. But um, I would love to talk to you more. So we got to get you on. We got some good stories. Adam has amazing celeb run-in stories from being a pap for so many years and we got we got some good stuff some juicy secrets we could tell you i love that well i'm excited we'll definitely plan that thank you again for your time today and where can we listen to your podcast as well where can we stream it uh, anywhere you uh stream your podcast itunes iheart spotify stitcher anywhere just search hollywood raw and uh it's normally the first one to pop up so take a listen and we give away we give away autographs every week big celeb mm -hmm. autographs to anyone who leaves reviews and stuff we pick out one that we like and we've given away like uh i think it, we gave john travolta's autograph away and who else i mean we've given away so many chris pratt i think i can't remember we've given away a ton of really big autographs worth like hundreds of dollars so check it out we love that thank you so much appreciate you we'll talk to you soon thank you bye Thanks. bye Dax.